Well, who doesn't love talking about extremely large engines in vehicles? On the domestic production automobile side, there were a number of large engines that General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler placed in their vehicles. GM's largest during the classic car era was the 500 cubic inch Cadillac V8 that was introduced for the 1970 model year and continued on through the 1976 model year before being downsized in 1977 to 425 cubic inches and again being downsized in 1980 to 368 cubic inches before being sunset after the 1981 model year. Over on the Ford side of the house, there was the Ford 460 that was quite popular for many years in the 1970s and into trucks in the 1980s and 1990s. There was a larger passenger car engine that Lincoln offered in the mid to late 1960s before the 385 series V8 replaced it, and that was the MEL 462 engine. That 462 was introduced in the 1966 model year, and it would only be a few model years before it would be replaced by the 385 series 460 cubic inch V8 under hood. Over at Mopar, the largest V8 that they put in their passenger production cars was a 440 cubic inch V8 during this time. And over at AMC, the largest was a 401 cubic inch V8. Now, in a number of cases, some of these companies produced larger engines in different vehicles, like medium and heavy duty trucks. We've already talked about the 637 cubic inch GMC V8, as well as the 702 cubic inch twin six V12 engine. Over at Ford, there were a series of super duty V8s that were not offered in passenger cars, but the largest of those was 534 cubic inches, and we're going to save a discussion on that for another day. But I wanted to talk with you a little bit about an engine that, frankly, it's hard to find much information on, but certainly existed, and I thought it's worth talking about, and that is the Leroy 884 cubic inch V8 engine. Now, I admittedly don't know what the proper pronunciation of L-E-R-O-I is, at least colloquially as it was talked about in the Times. I'm guessing it was Leroy and subsequently the Roy line of generators and engine sets. But if you want to take the true French pronunciation, it's Le Roi, which means the king. And how appropriate that a company whose name literally means the king would produce an 884 cubic inch V8 engine. I said that right, 884 cubic inches. Now, Leroy was a company that I believe, from the research that I've been able to do, first started making engines in 1913, mostly for farm tractors. And as years went on, they got into making larger and larger and larger engines. The company was based in the Milwaukee area in Wisconsin, and it would subsequently be acquired by another company, the Waukesha Engine Company, and that would occur in the 1958 model year. At that point, Waukesha had acquired the rights to the Leroy division of what was then the Westinghouse Air Brake Company, or Wabco, that again was based in Milwaukee. Now, Leroy made some pretty awesome engines overall. I think some of the largest that were produced in history, at least gas engine V8s, And this 884 cubic inch V8 wasn't even the largest one that was produced. There was a L4000 V12 engine that measured 4,018 cubic inches. 4,018 cubic inches. It had a seven and a half inch bore as well as stroke. What a cool engine. We're going to try to touch on that one when I have a chance to do some more research on that. But the 884 V8s had a 5.375-inch bore and a 4.875-inch stroke. And they were marketed as 884 cubic inches. They were technically 885 cubic inches. But hey, when you get this large, who's counting? These engines were produced from 1969 to 1974, and they made 360 horsepower at 3,000 RPM. Doesn't sound like much, but they had almost 800 pound-feet of torque. 800 pound-feet of torque. Now, the 884 was a larger brother to a smaller engine that was introduced in 1958 and would be produced from 1958 to 1974, and that was the 844. So it was 40 less cubic inches, and that V8 had a 5.25-inch bore and a 4.875-inch stroke. So 
just a little bit smaller bore than the 884 V8. This 844 cubic inch V8 was really the more famous of the two Leroy large V8 engines of the time. And it made 297 horsepower at 2,600 RPM and 725 pound-feet of torque at 1,700 RPM. The reason that this particular version was more famous is that it was the engine of choice and the standard engine in Mac M123 and M125 10-ton 6x6 trucks, at least the ones that were built in the 1950s. All of these 6x6 10-ton trucks that were built by Mack in the 1950s had the Leroy 844 cubic inch overhead valve V8 engine. They would later have a Cummins V8 diesel underhood that was only 785 cubic inches, but if you got the earlier Mack trucks, you got the larger Leroy engine. The design of these Mack 10-ton trucks was really set in motion in 1949 when the U.S. Army set forth a series of requirements for what it was looking for for a new line of 10-ton trucks, and Mack's design ended up winning out. And as I mentioned, Mack decided to use the Leroy engines to power these vehicles, at least in the early years. It's kind of interesting because you have an 844 cubic inch V8 that makes 297 horsepower, 725 pound-feet of torque, but the top speed on these Mack trucks is about 42 miles per hour, or if you're a fan of the metric system, 68 kilometers per hour. So they weren't going very fast. Of course, that wasn't the intent of these vehicles. They were designed to haul loads. In fact, they had a super heavy-duty chassis front beam axle that was mounted on leaf springs and rear tandem beam axles that were also mounted on leaf springs and an overall ladder frame chassis. These vehicles also had a 181 inch wheelbase and employed air drum brakes all around. So 181 inch wheelbase for comparative purposes, a 1970s era Cadillac Fleetwood had 133 inch wheelbase and that would have been the largest wheelbase that General Motors would have offered at the time and in fact, GM, Ford, or Chrysler would have offered at the time, although for a brief period of time, the 73 Imperial was actually a longer vehicle despite the fact that it sat atop a 127-inch wheelbase. Now, the Leroy 844 and 884 engine had a number of cool features. The first is take a look at this picture of an 884, and you'll notice that there are no exhaust manifolds on the outside of the engine, although you do see spark plugs and spark plug wires. And that's because the exhaust manifolds are actually on the interior of the V and are right next to the intake manifold, as you can see there. Now, why they chose to do that, I'm not quite sure. My hypothesis is that they were trying to get what would potentially be hot exhaust manifolds away from the spark plugs and spark plug wires so that they didn't, let's say, make those wires crispy and the engine could be more reliable. Of course, you're obviously heating up the intake air charge because the exhaust is so proximate to the intake, but I guess that was the trade-off that they decided to make. Also notice in this picture here that the intake had a really interesting design. It was actually a cross-ram intake, very similar to what Chrysler would employ. Obviously, the so-called rams and the tunnels in the intake manifold were not all that long, but it is in fact a cross-ram intake on this Leroy engine. Most of these engines had a single distributor, but I believe that they may have been available with two distributors, although I'm admittedly not quite sure. And all in all, these engines proved to be, I would say, quite reliable, and even Onan used them in the generator sets that they were producing in the 1960s. So they had a life outside of these Mack M123 and M125 trucks. Now, Leroy produced so many different cool engines. Uh, I'm going to have to do some more research on some of them. But they even produced a 289 cubic inch single cylinder engine. I can't even imagine how much that thing would shake. But it had a 7.25 inch bore and a 7 inch stroke and made 21 horsepower. So we'll have to touch on that 288 actually is what they called it. The A288 Leroy engine another day. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this spotlight on the Leroy 884 and 844 V8s, two big monsters of relatively modern times that certainly helped power a number of heavy-duty vehicles for the U.S. Army over the years.
And if you have any additional information about them, please feel free to drop me an email. Let's now close out with a video of a Mac M125 10-ton cargo vehicle running with this Leroy engine under hood so you can hear a little bit of what it sounds like. 